Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have this RM KL 200P linear amplifier. Now I know what you're all thinking, these things are cheap, rubbish, not worth it, but you know, I've never shied away from the uh, opportunity to repair something, so we're going to give it a go. But before we start, as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look on my website, microchips.net. But first, a word from today's video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay. PCBWay is a China Shenzhen-based PCB manufacturer and printed circuit board assembler with more than a decade in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication. They offer a wide range of services including 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and much more. PCBWay also offer a prototype PCB assembly service with component sourcing and online quote with 24-hour delivery services. PCBWay is committed to meeting all of your PCB needs. They offer quality, on-time delivery Delivery and competitive pricing. One to two layer boards start for as little as $5 with 24 hour turnaround. Get an instant quote today by visiting pcbway.com or click on the link below to check them out. So this linear amp was given to me by Andy over at Vintage Electronics Repair or the Vintage CB Radio Shack and he had bought a transistor from a well-known Chinese marketplace and we all know what's going to happen with that. Now I wasn't going to make a video out of this because you know these transistors are worth more than the actual unit. So I'd already took it out and I'd already diagnosed that it was a fake transistor that was causing the problem. It was oscillating, it was running red hot basically just not doing what it should do but what do you expect for a two or three pound from a cheap Chinese marketplace you ain't gonna get something that's worth 50 60 pound so I'm just scraping the top to see whether it's plastic and it seems to be of some sort of material and I'm sure it's some sort of transistor but like I say, it only produces a couple of watts. It gets red hot, it self oscillates. So let's have a look on the transistor tester, see what it actually says it is. Yeah, it says it's a transistor. So it is kind of a transistor, but it's certainly not a proper RF transistor. I'll put a call out on a couple of groups and Joe from Romeo Mike or rogimate.co.uk kindly sent me a transistor. So thank you, Joe. Go check them out. They make some amazing amplifiers and completely rework these RM amplifiers. So he kindly sent me this transistor. And let's say this transistor, brand new, is forty, fifty pounds. And you know, to buy a new linear amplifier with MOSFETs in it, they're only sixty pounds. So why bother repairing them? But you know, they like to try and repair these things. But you see, on this transistor, it's got the diode between collector and emitter, whereas the other one didn't have that. It's just like the 1969s. He's, he must have been um, writing the gain on uh, the HFE on the back of them so he could pair them up. But this is used, but it doesn't matter if it's used as long as it works. So we're going to fit it in to the amplifier, ensuring the correct orientation with the cutout on one of the tabs. We'll just check its alignment to make sure it can align up with the holes that are in the metal um, heat sink. And everything looks to be aligned. A little bit fiddly to get it in, but yeah, everything looks aligned. No problem with that. 
Yeah, everything's good. So let's get it soldered in. And see what happens. I mean, you know, you wouldn't replace the transistor in this thing because it's just, it's pointless. You know, for the cost of them. But anyway, we'll solder into place. Just checking orientation, make sure we are definitely in the right way, which we are. There we are, nicely soldered into place. Just make sure that that surface is clean because we want a nice um, contact with the heat sink. We'll say I do like those key rings Rogimate send out. Very nice, nice touch. Again, thanks Joe for sending that transistor out for me. It's very kind of you. So we'll clean off all the old heatsink compound, thermal transfer compound, whatever you wish to call it. We'll make sure the area's nice and clean. like so. What we're going to do is we're going to add a little blob of heat sink compound onto the bottom of our new transistor. That will be more than enough. We'll proceed to rebuild the amplifier. And hopefully it works. So making sure these screws are nicely tightened up for optimal heat transfer. Not like I'm ever going to be running this thing. Silly power, but you know, you got to do the job right. So there it is, all back together. Now let's fire it up and see what happens. The one thing I couldn't work out is that the red light says linear on, but the red light is actually turning the preamp on, which you can hear in the background. And this confused me for a little bit. Was that supposed to be linear on? But it's preamp on. So, has that been like that from new? Is the LED the wrong way around? If it is, it's um, sloppy workmanship. And there you go, with the green light, which is supposedly preamp, you can see my power meter, the needle leaves the side of the unit. On the 20 watt scale, this should produce reckon 80 to 100 so 4 watts going in just drop it down to 3 watts we're hard over on that scale we've got about 40 watts went out there for about 2 or 3 watts going in so we'll put it to 5 watts and we've got about 80 watts coming out so funnily enough and then we go to 100. So funnily enough, this transistor is actually working as it should do because, you know, it's a genuine transistor. Not like that fake thing that was bought originally. And we've had issues with transistors before. I've done videos on transistors, fake things from eBay, supposed to be 1307s and 1969s when they clearly weren't. If you want to buy an RF transistor, you need to buy it from a reputable source that you know. Just put 
put it onto PEP. About 130, 140 there. Unfortunately, I can't keep it long too long because my dummy load is only rated at 100 watts. And I would like to keep it. I would like a better dummy load. But for about 5 or 6 watts going in, we're getting a nice 100 coming out. There we go. Well, it's about 6 or 7 watts going in. Nice 100 coming out. probably at the maximum we can drive it anymore and we'll be seeing that very expensive transistor off so there's these switches again you can see it says green preamp red linear so the leds are all the way around how much of a pain is that okay so we'll switch the led around Let's do an on-air test. You would. Anyway, uh, what, what's the signal like over there? Oh, okay, right. Well, this is my amp off. So, one, two, three, four, five. I'm over in time side, yeah? Yeah, the aerial's down as well, so that would kind of explain it. Right, let's have a go with this then. Right, so five and seven, five and eight. Right, let's um, right, let's slap this on a little bit. See how we're doing. One, two. Right, how's that? Have we got any difference? Oh yes, yes, it's working. Now we're just over the nine of Roger. Roger, diddly dodger. Yeah, I think the model right up now. Ah, that's not too bad then, is it? It's only one of those um, KL um, KL two hundred things. So yeah, it worked. We had a signal increase as to be expected. So we switched the LED around. And now preamp is green and linear is red. As it should be. Because that would annoy me. So yeah, quick easy fix for that. But unfortunately, if you have to buy a transistor for this thing, it isn't a cheap fix and it's just... You might as well buy another one for the price. It just ain't worth repairing. And that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee. Have a look at my website, microchips.net. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.